in July of 1941, five young Negroes made aviation history at Tuskegee, Alabama. These five men were the first of their race to graduate under the Army Air Force's newly organized plan for training Negro pilots. From all parts of the country, these men have come to take the acid test. They are anxious and eager. No leniency is shown and none is asked. After all, each cadet here has passed the same rigid entrance examinations, the same stiff mental and physical requirements as every other cadet. These are just five ordinary men learning to fly for their country. These men are representatives of 30 million fellow Negroes. And all 30 million have their eyes and hopes pinned on them. They flew hard, studied hard, and busted buttons bulging their chests at inspection. And they made the grade. They are inspired by their leader, Captain Benjamin O. Davis, the first Negro ever to be accorded the traditional recognition by West Point upperclassmen. With basic completed, the new pilots are sent to Selfridge Field for advanced courses in strafing and skip bombing. Here, for the first time, they will fly P-40s, now redesigned and adapted to latest attack methods. Before their bombing flights over the target range, the pilots gather before headquarters for briefing. They have come from all parts of the United States and from all social levels to learn to fly and, if necessary, to die for their homeland. In their attentive eyes, confidence is reflected. Confidence in their ability to handle the task ahead, confidence arising from the knowledge that they have proven capable of handling our powerful warplanes. Negro pilots use some of the finest training bases in the United States. The Tuskegee Air Base at Tuskegee, Alabama was built entirely by Negroes. In addition to this $4 million establishment, the Negro training program operates the well-equipped Oscoda Air Base in Michigan for advanced training. At Oscoda, pilots also step up from the BT-13 trainers to fast, powerful P-40 fighters. The percentage of washouts is no higher than in any other school. Their ability to grasp and utilize mechanical and technical knowledge is unquestioned. The morale is high, bolstered by the knowledge that they are not a part of an experiment. One of the group, Max Ross, ex-inspector in an Ohio steel mill, won recognition for a valiant effort to save his burning plane. Lieutenant Ross, was the first Negro member of the famed Caterpillar Club. fastened to the wings of their P-40s, the pilots dive in low over the ground, release the bombs, and speed away in a sweeping curve as the bombs skip into the target. Results are soon checked, and the deadly accuracy of these young pilots calls for a hearty congratulations all around. The men are prepared to meet the enemy. Then Italy. With silver wings won, 
These men form the first Negro Pursuit Squadron and are sent into active combat under the command of the first Negro pilot to earn his wings, Lieutenant Colonel Ben Davis. Somewhere in Italy, the mechanics make final checks on their trim P-40s. Excitement is in the air. America's first Negro pilots are to receive their baptism of fire. They are to fly against the Luftwaffe and deliver a blow to the Axis. Bouncing down the improvised metal runway, they head straight for the enemy target, an old, well-fortified Italian city. And the target gets a pasting. For this and other excellent work, the Negro Fighter Squadron has won a group citation from the Commanding General of the Air Forces. Personal citations have been won by individual members. The Negro pilot has proved himself a capable, fearless fighter, dangerous and deadly to the enemy, an able defender of the American way of life. <laughs>